Hello everyone, welcome to Sunya IS and welcome to this lecture. In this lecture, we are going to talk about plant diversity. Very important topic. Every year, one to two questions are coming from this particular topic. So, one question would be that two or three terms will be given and they will be some kind of plant, maybe an invasive species, maybe uh, some kind of biological agent uh, to clean an oil spill, you know, oil zapper or things like that. So, plant diversity in India is important. Now, uh, this is a topic which is overlapping with science and tech, right? Science and tech, maybe you study the classification of plants and the basics. So, because we have not done science and tech as of now, this class will also cover a little bit of basics when it comes to plant diversity. Uh, so, if you know about plant diversity, if you are from science background, you would be knowing the basics. So, you can skip that part, okay? Uh, but it will be having some basics today, okay? So, with this, let's start with the plant diversity. Before that, let me just tell you about this course that we are running, which is revise entire prelim syllabus through 3000 plus MCQs. We have already done Indian polity, Indian economy, modern history, geography. Um, now we are doing environment ecology, then we'll do ancient medieval, art and culture, science and tech and current affairs. So entire course is to be done by uh, me through these MCQ methods and the purpose being to get you very well aware of the new pattern and to cover the entire course of course. So you can contact on this number and visit this website to know more. All right, question one. Consider the following statements regarding plant diversity of India. India is a mega diverse country in terms of having plant richness and holding 10th position globally. India accounts for 9% global recorded plants over 18,000 flowering plant species. Angiosperms are the most numerous plant group in India accounting for 40% of the floral diversity of the country. How many of the statements given above are correct? So, this is a very theoretical question. If you know the basics, you know them. If you don't know them, then you are not supposed to attempt this question. Now, um, fortunately, these kind of fact-based questions are not being asked a lot now, right? With the new kind of pattern because it's not possible to remember that much data. So, this is the basic data about the plant diversity in India. And please note this down that yes, India is definitely a mega diverse country. When we talk about plant, uh, plant richness and we do hold in terms of plant richness 10th position globally. So first is correct. Then second one is incorrect. And that's why because you know when, when you do a question incorrectly you tend to remember it. If you do a question correctly you don't remember it. Mostly what, uh, that's what happens. So India does not account for 9% of global recorded plants. India accounts for 11% of global recorded plants. And there are about 18,000 flowering plant species. Also, 18,000 is just flowering plant species. But overall plant species is somewhere around 50,000. Within India only, you will find about 50,000 plant species. So, second is incorrect. And third, angiosperms are the most numerous plant group in India accounting for 40% of the floral diversity in our country. Now, what are angiosperms? Angiosperms are the highest evolutionary variety of flora. These are the kind of plants that bear fruits and flowers are also coming from fruits, on, fruits only. So, they bear flowers, they bear fruits. So, here only two is the correct answer. Now, see these basic differences between angiosperms and gymnosperms. Okay, these are important. You know, when uh, plant diversity started emerging billions of years ago, it was not actually a plant that emerged. It was a cyanobacteria, blue-green algae, right? We do not classify blue-green algae as plants. We classify them as um, algae in itself. Blue-green algae specifically, it's the Primitive kind of landform. Algae we classify as uh, plants, one category of plants. Whatever is creating its own food can be classified as plant as such. But angiosperms and gymnosperms, they are the highest varieties and angiosperms are the 
or on the topmost level of uh, plants now let's talk about gymnosperms gymnosperms are non flowering plants and as you can see here you must have heard about coniferous trees coniferous trees which are found in mountainous areas so those are gymnosperms and their reproductive system is in their cones hai na when you go to uh, these mountainous areas many people bring back those cones also so they are actually reproductive elements of these plants their seeds are unclosed unenclosed or naked seeds their leaves are needle like they are evergreen theek hai they are evergreen in nature they don't have any shedding season because leaves hai nahi what we call as leaves they actually have like needles they have haploid tissue they are mainly pollinated by wind and they have a soft wood okay on the other hand angiosperms these are flowering plants so most of the trees which have flowers most of the plants that you see around all of them are the are at the highest level of evolution of plants these are angiosperms uh, their reproductive system is in their flowers because seeds are coming out of the flowers only seed is enclosed within the ovary and their leaves are flat you know the generic leaves that we draw these kind of leaves so these are the leaves of uh, angiosperms and they have a seasonal life cycle so uh, the shedding season is there and they have triploid issue uh, tissue they have they are pollinated by animals wind and water all three of them and they have hardwood so let's talk about the evergreen trees uh, the tropical evergreen hai na to tropical deciduous these kind of trees are all examples of angiosperms here are some examples which are given apple is there dandelion is there wheat maple rose walnut so from the biggest of the trees to um, plants like you know rose which is not such a huge plant we have the angiosperms gymnosperm ke kya example hain pine spruce yew cypress ginkgo pine and spruce you would be knowing as uh, examples of coniferous plants right so these are gymnosperms and we have a very high variety of angiosperms 40% of our plant variety is angiosperms now don't think that the rest of the 60% would be gymnosperms because as we will move forward you will see that there are more varieties more classifications of plants as well so hold uh, that thought so this as you can see is an example this is an angiosperm flower this is a very common flower and gymnosperms are these cone like structures okay next question consider the following statements eastern ghats have the most fungi diversity followed by western ghats and western himalayas lichens are rarely found in rivers and streams but mostly found in groundwater and wetland mosses are the most abundant species of bryophytes in india how many of the given statements are incorrect now here let's just see what is the classification of plants then we'll be able to come back to this question better see we have five kingdoms out of that one kingdom is the plant kingdom now broadly plant kingdom is classified into four categories mosses ferns gymnosperms angiosperms gymnosperms and angiosperms we have just done now now these two also we need to see in more detail so see here i hope it is visible to everyone see here this is the kingdom plantae and overall when you do the scientific classification you will see that there are two varieties one is cryptogram one is phanerogram the cryptograms do not have seeds theek hai now if they don't have seeds how do they reproduce they reproduce by spores theek hai they reproduce by spores the spores are the same spores which sometime um, get you know dispersed in the air and they cause uh, to humans and animals they cause uh, respiratory problems those same spores those are the reproductive organs uh, reproductive uh, method of these cryptograms and what are phanerograms phanerograms create seeds so as and when 
जस्ट लाइक एनिमल्स यू नो वी वर एप्स बिफोर आस द एप्स वर देयर है ना तो एप्स देन वी यू नो आर बैक स्टार्टेड स्ट्रेटनिंग एंड नाउ वी आर ह्यूमन बींग सिमिलरली इन प्लांट्स ऑल्सो इनिशियली द रिप्रोडक्टिव ऑर्गन वॉज नॉट यू नो एनक्लोज सो द सर्वाइवल रेट वॉज वेरी लेस बट इवेंचुअली एज द प्लांट्स इवॉल्व दे सॉ एंड दे यू नो जस्ट लाइक अडेप्टेशन हैपन सो दैट हैपन विद दैम दैट द सीड्स स्टार्टेड इमर्जिंग एंड द इनक्लोज सीड्स वर देर सो फेनेरोग्राम्स में देर इज जिम्नोस्पर्म एंड एनजियोस्पर्म वी हैव टॉक्ड अबाउट इट now let's come to cryptograms which is the initial variety of plants the initial evolution so the first is algae and algae these are unicellular organisms you must have uh, you must remember um you know algae is um, photosynthetic yes but they do not have a differentiated cell body okay so they do not have any true root stems or leaves and uh, these are the variety of chlorophyta they have chlorophyll they create their own uh, you know own food but overall they do not have seeds then we come to mosses and liverworts now these are the kingdom bryophyte this is chlorophyte this is bryophyte and they have some root and leaf like structures so if you see mosses these are the green varieties which are stuck onto rocks if a rock is moist you will see that many a times uh, it will get green right so what are these small green patches that are emerging on rocks they are actually mosses okay and then the more evolved variety is ferns you know there's this company called ferns and petals so petals is a part of flowers and ferns these are the cryptograms which do not have any seeds but they are evolved form of bryophytes fine this is the broad variety now gymnosperms you know needle like leaves conifers is there then there can be wide leaves also and angiosperms flowering variety you know now come back to this particular classification eastern ghats have the most fungi diversity followed by western ghats and western himalayas this particular statement should not belong in this lecture why because there are five kingdoms and fungi is a specific specifically a uh, different kingdom fungi are not plants fungi are not animals also right so but anyway you can solve this particular question by your common sense because you know that uh, western ghats overall are a bio uh, biodiversity hotspot and i had asked you in one of those lectures to tell me in the comments that what are the bases on which biodiversity hotspots are made but anyway i did not i don't think there were a lot of comments on there but anyway uh so eastern ghats it does not have the maximum variety it's actually the western ghats theek okay? hai western ghats has the highest variety and then eastern ghats is there then western himalayas is there so that this one is for, uh, being solved by common sense incorrect pucha hai to the statement is incorrect and for the purpose of this question it is correct second lichens now lichens are also not plants lichens and this was a question please be very careful this was a question what is a lichen we have studied about algae right so when algae combines with fungi the very um, uh, the the union of algae ha uh, huh, sorry the mutualistic the mutualistic union of algae and fungi actually creates lichens and upsc has asked questions about lichens multiple times they are formed because of the symbiotic or mutualistic relationship symbiotic or mutualistic relationship between algae and fungi fungi is a specific kingdom algae is a uh, chlo uh, chlorophyll filled uh, you know organism so lichens now lichens are rarely found in rivers and streams but mostly found in ground water and wetland this is wrong actually uh this these lichens are definitely rarely found in uh, rivers and streams but they are also not found in ground water they are mostly found in wetlands okay lichens are mostly found in wetlands and that's why 
लाइकन्स आर ऑल्सो कॉल्ड इंडिकेटर स्पीशीज इंडिकेटर स्पीशीज वाई बिकॉज एज सोन एज वेटलैंड स्टार्ट बींग पोल्यूटेड द लाइकन्स विल स्टार्ट डाइंग और चेंजिंग देयर कलर राइट एंड दैट इज वेन वी विल फाइंड आउट दैट देर इज समथिंग गोइंग रॉन्ग विद द इको सिस्टम ऑफ द वेटलैंड आई होप यू रिमेंबर द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ इको सिस्टम so yes lichens are not found as such in rivers and streams because these are flowy in nature okay uh, but they are also not found in ground water they are found in wetland i hope you remember the concept of lentic and lotic ecosystems lentic is which is static like a wetland and lotic is which is flowing like a river or a stream okay so second one is also incorrect for the purpose of this question it is correct now mosses are the most abundant species of bryophytes in india this is actually correct we just studied that bryophytes come just after algae uh and mosses definitely are the most abundant of those species so here only two statements are incorrect so b is the answer you have gotten a broad overview of the plant kingdom when we'll go to science and tech we will again study in the biology part of it that how plant kingdom is overall uh, managed and classified and you don't need to be from science background to understand for the level of upsc okay upsc is very equitable when it comes to the entire uh, humanity science balance fine so don't worry about any of it um that is what i would like to suggest you and yes let's move on to the next question find the descending sequence of floral endemism in india peninsular india eastern himalayas northwestern himalayas and andaman and nicobar islands choose the correct sequence now before you jump to any conclusions and say that andaman and nicobar islands would be the uh, place having the maximum amount of endemism i want you to consider one simple simple aspect out of these four categories which one is geographically the biggest category think about it what is the question asking you you remember the meaning of endemism that this particular plant is found only in this region that is endemism right this is one of the conditions of classifying an area as biodiversity hotspot and that is why western ghat it is a biodiversity hotspot but anyway which is the biggest geographic category here is it peninsular india eastern himalayas northwestern himalayas or andaman nicobar andaman nicobar here is the smallest category fine and smallest category means that no matter how rich the overall um, you know distribution would be there number wise it would not be that much and which is the biggest category it is peninsular india because peninsular india has this entire region it covers western ghats eastern ghats the nilgiris where western ghats and eastern ghats meet hai na the central highland the deccan plateau everything it covers so it's geographically the largest category and there is a hint also that is given regarding this that peninsular india is on the first point in two options right so it has definitely the highest level of floral endemism then how can you arrive at this you have an option uh, from eastern himalaya or northwestern himalaya if you are a student um, of these classes for long you would know that definitely eastern himalayas are having more varieties that's why eastern himalayas are classified as a biodiversity hotspot western himalayas are not classified so but anyway by common sense you can arrive at this because andaman and nicobar is at the end over here and you are uh, you are arranging them in descending sequence so when it comes to floral endemism peninsular india has the high, highest amount of uh, floral variety then we have eastern himalayas then we have northwestern himalayas and then we have the andaman and nicobar islands because there is just such a small you know category so a is the correct answer common sense se why question solve you do not need to know a lot of things just some basic knowledge will do now see this is the overall biodiversity and you can see this is the entire peninsular india 
वॉट इज पेनिन्सुलर इंडिया एंटायर इंडिया बिलो द नर्मदा रिवर ठीक है नाउ प्लीज टेल मी इन द कॉमेंट्स फ्रॉम वेयर डज नर्मदा रिवर स्टार्ट दिस इज वॉट नर्मदा रिवर इज इट फ्लोज लाइक दिस है ना फ्लोज लाइक दिस प्लीज टेल मी फ्रॉम वेयर डज इट स्टार्ट वॉट इज द ओरिजिन पॉइंट ऑफ नर्मदा रिवर बट एनी विच वे यू कैन सी इन फ्रंट ऑफ यू दैट द फ्लोरल एंडेमिजम इज हाइएस्ट इन द पेनिन्सुलर इंडिया एंड इवन इफ विद इन पेनिन्सुलर इंडिया यू आर टू टॉक अबाउट इट द वेस्टर्न घाट्स हैव द हाइएस्ट फ्लोरल एंडेमिजम है ना रीजन रीजन इज वेरी वेरी सिंपल द मॉनसून राइट द मॉनसून इज द रीजन सिंपल इज दैट देन देन वी हैव द नॉर्थ ईस्टर्न रीजन जस्ट लुक एट सिक्किम how diverse because these are actually this is continuity right it's not as if this is a blank over here this is nepal right so this is a continuity of eastern uh, eastern himalayas and then there is western himalayas you see not a lot of uh, varieties are found here in the greater himalayas because of the kind of climate and temperature that it has so any which way i hope you will remember this particular map and it will stick to your mind ek baar dobara dekh lo if you want to take a screenshot you can take a screenshot as well moving on to the next question the term crop genetic diversity best defines which of the following it is the variety and variability of plants and crops used in agriculture including their phenotypic and genotypic features it denotes total diversity of standing crops within an ecosystem it denotes diversity of crops cultivated in a single hectare of land it denotes diversity of genes in a single crop of an ecosystem crop genetic diversity so it is definitely asking you something related to genes so it will not be about total diversity of standing crop within an ecosystem that is that itself is called standing crop then it denotes diversity of crops cultivated in a single hectare of land no it has nothing to do with genes right this particular two options so you are left with two options it denotes diversity of genes in a single crop of an ecosystem it is the variety and variability of plants and crops used in agriculture including their phenotypic and genotypic features so answer here is a theek hai ye ek just note down this concept which is called uh, crop genetic diversity crop genetic diversity means that how is first of all the genetic diversity different and how is this genetic diversity manifesting itself physically what is the phenotype phenotype is the physical manifestation of genetic diversity so you, genes can be different for example if you take the example of uh, twins so there are identical twins and there are non identical twins in human beings what are non identical twins wherein there is a lot of genetic similarity but the phenotypic similarity is not there that is why the faces of twins which are born just a few seconds apart from each other they will be different okay and some twins will be exactly looking the same because they have the same phenotypic features as well ठीक है तो सेम विद दिस दैट व्हेन वी स्टडी द वैरायटी एंड वेरिएबिलिटी ऑफ प्लांट्स एंड क्रॉप्स यूज्ड इन एग्रीकल्चर इंक्लूडिंग द फेनोटाइपिक एंड जेनोटाइपिक फीचर्स दैट इज कॉल्ड क्रॉप जेनेटिक डाइवर्सिटी ठीक है सो ए इज द आंसर दिस इज अ न्यू कॉन्सेप्ट दैट आई हैव टोल्ड यू सो जस्ट बी अवेयर द टर्म डाई बैक रेफर्स टू विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग स्टेटमेंट गिवेन बिलो it is one of the adaptive techniques of plants to avoid adverse conditions mass dying of plants due to its inability to tolerate pest attacks destruction of field crops due to the attack of wild animals in search of food and predation of invasive alien species causes the mass death of plant species so how many uh, uh, sorry which of the given statements is or are correct when you have these kind of questions and nowadays in upsc four to five questions of this variety are coming wherein they will randomly give a term well not randomly sometimes it's random also so if let's say five questions are coming wherein you are just being given a term and you are given four options and tell what are these terms two of those will be absolutely random theek hai like jaise volbachia method was asked 
देन एरियल मेटाजेनोमिक्स इन ट्वेंटी वॉज आस माइक्रो सैटेलाइट डीएनए पूछ लिया है ना स्मॉल फार्मर स्मॉल फार्मर लार्ज लैंड होल्डिंग ऐसे करके कुछ था सो फोर तो आई एम एबल टू रिमेम्बर ना ओनली आई थिंक देर वो वन और टू मोर beta in uh, economics so these kind of one word questions are taking up a lot of uh, space in upsc so the term dieback when these kind of terms come either you know the exact term if you don't know the exact term try and go if you have to attempt the question if you are not done with the rest of the questions and you know you have not done enough questions try and go for the widest possible option that is there hai na so what is the widest possible option over there which has very less chance of being incorrect it is the first one one of the adaptive techniques of plants to avoid adverse conditions so technique is not given adverse condition is not given so and dieback dieback itself is explaining that you know something is collapsing on itself kind of a thing so this has very less chance of being incorrect rest of the things you see are very very uh, how do i say it specific mass dying of plants due to its inability to tolerate pests so pest is specific destruction of field crops due to attack of wild animals so wild animals ho gaya specific then predation of invasive alien species so very specific things but a a can fit into the definition of all these three hai na so a is the correct here and why is it asked it is not asked out of the blue dieback was in news because of this dieback disease hits neem trees in telangana again so and this is december 23 2022 theek okay? hai to again we are not saying that you read all the news of 2022 but whatever we are sorry whatever we are able to cover Uh, and which we think is important because upsc has this habit you know i'll tell you about uh, the bad habit of upsc they will not ask you something that is in news very recently they will ask you something that has been in news one year prior so when they asked about afghanistan they afghanistan and the uh, you know the um, invasion of taliban the overrule of taliban happened one year before that that particular year no question was asked from afghanistan next year they asked similarly when ukraine question was asked in 2023 which are the countries bordering ukraine it was in 2022 beginning that russia had attacked ukraine so it was expected in 2022 that question but it came in 2023 similarly a question on covid 19 covid 19 happened in 2020 question was expected in 2020 when did the question come question came in 2022 about uh, the kind of covid vaccines you know teeno type ke covid vaccines puch liye and in 2021 also question was asked about the uh, t cells and b cells i think yeah so this is a tendency of upsc and that's why if a disease has been in news the dieback disease so it is being it, it is a high chance that it might be asked later on so this is what a dieback disease is you know when there is a threat any kind of threat that may, that it may be a drought it may be a pest attack it may be anything but the plant gets to know that the plant's survival is going to be difficult so what the plant does is the non essential functions now again of course leaves are not non essential but having leaves throughout the plant can be considered non essential so if you see this particular plant leaves are there some leaves are there on the uh, bottom side hai na but the unnecessary leaves the decorative aspect the plant let goes of it and this is called dieback disease because there are um unsuitable conditions so the plant is not dead hai na plant is not dead plant is alive but the leaves reappear and you must have even i observed this you know this year i have a tulsi plant at home so that tulsi plant shed all its leaves in the um, in the, at the end of winter in the month of january it shed all its leaves okay and um, 
I and my mother, we waited for about uh, how much time? I think 15, 20 days. Leaves did not reappear. So I thought that, okay, maybe the plant is dead. So I uh, was about to get a new tulsi plant for the house. But she stopped me. My mother stopped me and she said that, no, you wait for a few days and you see the leaves will be back. Because tulsi is not able to take, a, uh, the, take the, you know, cold of winter. And the leaves were back in about uh, mid of February. They were back. So that is what die back. Now, sometimes it can be a disease, but it can be an adaptive behavior also. So this is die back disease. And question can also be similar to this, that in the context of uh, which plant is die back disease recently mentioned. So that is neem plant. Okay, tulsi mat likh dena pe. Tulsi is my own example. Right? So here answer is A. Moving on. Next. Which of the following insectivorous plants can be found in India? Hydrobanda, butterwort, bladderwort, pitcher plant and sundew. Um, there is a difference between invasive species and insectivorous plants. Insectivorous plants are the plants which eat insects which are carnivores in nature. Okay. All these three species are found in India. Not necessarily all of them are endemic to India. They are found in the rest of the places also. Uh, one of them, one of the pitcher plants is found just in India. We'll talk about it. But here answer is D. Now, very interesting discussion coming up because we will discuss all these insectivorous plants, which are also called carnivorous plants. So, Alvrovonda. Alvrovonda or it's also just called uh, Vonda only. It's also called Vonda only. And it is a floating plant. It is a floating aquatic plant. And uh, where is it found in India? It is found in Sundarbans. You can understand if it is a floating plant, it will be found in a marine ecosystem or a wetland only. So it's found in Sundarbans. And its IUCN status is actually endangered. IUCN ranks uh, plants also, not just animals. Fine. Next. Butter what? What is a what? When you, call, uh, when you talk about what's in Human beings, warts are, um, how do I say it? These are some kind of uh, skin diseases that emerge because of certain infection. Warts emerged. So, these plants which are having the word wart in front of them, they are like small blobs. So, if you see this, this is a butter wart. So, this is a, a small, uh, you know, shrub kind of a thing. And its name is Pinguicula. Pinguicula, which is commonly known as butterwort, is a genus of carnivorous flowering plants. And they use sticky glandular leaves to lure, trap and digest insects. And there are 80 known species of this butterwort. 13 are native to Europe. 9 are native to North America. Some are native to North Asia. And largest number are found in South and Central America. But some aspects, some, some varieties are found in India also. So... It is found in India. Then the next variety that we are talking about and butterwort uh, is overall, where is it found in India? This is also important. Butterwort, as you can see that in Asia also, it is found in Northern Asia. So where would it be found in India? It would be found in the Northern, uh, northern side, right? So it is found in the Himalayas. It is found in the Himalayas. And specifically in Kashmir Himalayas and in Sikkim. Sikkim Himalayas, Kashmir Himalayas. Fine. Next. Their IUCN status is uh, not, they are not threatened and all. They are least concerned. Okay? They are of least concern. Then there is bladder wart. Again, bladder wart, uh, the word wart is there. So, it looks some, uh, something like this. And as you can see in the picture, it is again something, some uh, a particular uh, species that grows in wetlands. So it grows in wetlands and it is also least concerned when it is growing in wetlands. Where would it be found? Sundarbans. And we are not talking, these are not invasive species, okay? Please do not, because UPSC is very smart, they will give you an option of invasive and insectivorous both. And most probably... They will give you insectivorous in the initial option so that you immediately take it. But please don't do that mistake, okay? Alright. 
Then we have the very famous pitcher plant. This is how it looks. And pitcher plant actually is not one plant at all. Pitcher plant is a huge category of plants. Several different carnivorous plants that have modified leaves known as pitfall traps. Another question that is often asked and has been asked in uh, past also that which part of the plant modifies, modifies itself into this kind of a pitcher. So the part of the plant which modifies itself is actually leaves. Okay. So this is an important fact. Ye yaad rakna. And how will you remember all this? You need to note this down. Okay. If you have the course, then you have uh, the description and everything. But the slides you won't be getting. Okay. You won't be getting these slides. So you better screenshot them. Uh, or you rather than screenshotting them, na, you just keep on uh, writing the important pointers from each slide. So there will be hardly three to four pointers from each slide. And um, you can actually keep on revising that again and again. The traps of what are considered to be true pitcher plants are formed by specialized leaves. And uh, how do they attract their prey? The insects, they attract them by nectar. Now, within pitcher plants, there is a certain pitcher plant called Nepenthes khasiana. And this term, khasi, is after the khasi hills of Meghale. So, basically, it is endemic to the khasi hills of Meghale. And it is an endangered tropical pitcher plant of genus Nepenthes. And it is the only Nepenthes species native to India. Native to India, that is, originally from India. Not endemic. Endemic also, sorry. But native also. It is thought to attract prey by means of blue fluorescence. So, it turns a little bluish. Okay? So, this is there. And the last category is? Sundew, very beautiful but uh, insectivorous, dangerous for the insects. So, sundew is uh, technically called drosera, commonly known as sundew because of this dewish kind of appearance which makes it very beautiful. I find this a little scary though, but it's beautiful. And one of the largest genera of carnivorous plants with at least 194 species and uh, overall, the insects which they capture, they are used to supplement the poor mineral nutrition of the soil in which they are found. And this sundew is found in entire world apart from Antarctica. Okay? All the continents apart from Antarctica. Important thing about them is that they are critically endangered. They are critically endangered. Okay? And they are also found in marshy lands. So, they are also found in uh, the Sundarban area. So, many insectivorous plants are found in Sundarban areas. So, you just see this once again. We have done five plants, uh, five kind of uh, insectivorous plants, not invasive, insectivorous. All right. Let's move on to the next question. With reference to classification of plants, match the following pairs. Herbs, shrubs, climbers and epiphytes. So, let's just see. If you know the answer, you can pause and answer for yourself. You, you should not be needing the options in this. I know options are being hidden because of my face. You should not be needing options for this. There are some questions that you should not be needing options. So, anyway, let's cover this. These are types of plants basically. Tree we all know. Shrubs. Shrubs are smaller than trees. But they do have a woody stem. So, shrubs are, you can call them medium-sized trees. Okay, one category lesser from trees. They are medium-sized. And most important distinctive characteristic is that they are woody. They are woody. Herbs are not woody. You know, um, whenever you say herbs, you see soft stems. So, herbs are uh, those kind of plants whose stems are always green. Green stems. They do not have any wood. And uh, those are the herbs. Then what are climbers and creepers? Climbers, you know, just like money plant is there. So they will climb with the help of other plants hai na, around the plant. And they will take some kind of nutrition also from the plant. Creepers are those which cannot grow vertically. So they will just creep horizontally only. Okay, these are creepers. Another category is epiphytes. 
epiphytes now epiphytes are just like climbers but there is a difference climbers are also taking support uh, the the nutritional support from the tree so if on this tree a climber is growing it is also taking nutritional support not just mechanical support from this tree but the epiphytes they are not taking any nutritional support they are taking only mechanical support only mechanical support to actually grow fine where are epi epiphytes found mostly epiphytes are found and this was asked in your upsc exam also epiphytes are found in tropical evergreen forests tropical evergreen forests because in tropical evergreen forest these kind of thick trees grow up to a height of 60 meters per tree and they create a kind of canopy because of which sunlight is not able to reach till the ground level and because sunlight is not able to reach till the ground level these epiphytes grow with the help of these mechanical help of these trees and they grow a little upwards so that they can get a little bit more sunlight theek hai so these are the kind of plants now let's come back to the question now you should be able to match so herbs plant growing on host plant not nourished by the host plant no that is actually epiphyte we just studied it plant whose stem is always green and height of not more than 1 meter that is a herb we just studied it herb will never have a uh, wood then woody perennial plants whose height is not more than 6 meters that is a shrub you can understand how different shrubs are and trees are because shrubs will not grow beyond a height of 6 meters trees can grow the tallest trees can go to a height of 60 meters also in tropical evergreen forests okay why am i mentioning tropical evergreen forest again and again because that's one of the favorite topics of upsc the ask tropical evergreen forest like anything in 2023 it was asked 21 also i think it was asked 20 also it was asked tropical evergreen is their favorite and climbers herbaceous plants that climb up trees by twiddling round so one is matched with b two is matched with c three with d ha a hi hai answer the only option that was visible to you that is the answer but uh, i hope it is clear to you next with reference to effects of abiotic components of plants consider the following statements plants grown in violet and ultraviolet right lights are dwarf while plants grown in red light result in etiolo etiolated plants even light radiation of frost would result in killing of young plants such as sal seedlings snow results in mechanical bending of tree stems and death of plants due to coagulation of protoplasmic proteins will happen when plants expose plants are exposed to huge temperatures so how many of the given statements are correct okay so uh, how are plants impacted first of all plants grow best out of the visible spectrum the vibgyor you know the vibgyor right the rainbow that we see that vibgyor violet indigo blue um yellow orange red out of these colors there are two colors in which uh, photosynthesis happens effectively and those two colors are blue and red fine so when we talking about blue and red this is the visible spectrum now plants which grow in violet and ultraviolet radiation not in blue but violet and ultraviolet radiation they are they turn out to be dwarf so this is absolutely correct and the plants which are uh, grown in red light they result in etiolated pla etiolated plants that is also absolutely correct so blue and red green light is not absorbed by plants it's it's a myth that green light is absorbed by plants and green light is needed it is actually blue light that is absorbed by plants green light is reflected by plants and uh, anyhow any object that you see a specific color of is reflecting that color whichever color is absorbed you will not be able to see that color fine so first is correct second is also correct that even light radiation of frost 
would result in killing of young plants such as sal seedlings. Now I have a question for you. Which kind of vegetation is sal found in? Sal trees, very famous trees. Uh, so sal trees, where are they found? In which kind of forest? Tropical evergreen, tropical deciduous, desertic forest, uh, coniferous forest. Where are they found? Please tell me in the comments. Where are sal trees found? found? And there was a question in 2023, wherein there were three categories of trees. Three trees that were given and uh, the question was asking, which of the given are decid deciduous in nature? Okay, so important. Snow results in mechanical bending of tree stems. Yes, this is correct. When snow is, um, you know, when trees are covered with snow, it looks very beautiful. But eventually it's adding a lot of load to the tree. So it leads to uh, bending of the tree stems. And death of plants due to coagulation of protoplasmic protein will happen when plants exposed are exposed to huge temperatures. This is also absolutely correct. So that will lead to death of plants. Um, when there is huge temperature exposure. So, answer here is D, all four. Yeah, you can see here, you can see all four. Okay, Chal. next pe chale. Next, consider the following statements. Barks are the number of growth rings inside the trunk of a tree, which can be used to find the age of the tree. Pith is the tiny dark spot of spongy living cells in the center of the tree trunk. An annular ring is the outside layer of the trunk, twigs and branches. So, which of the given statements are correct? One only, two only, one and two, one and three. Before answering this, let's just dive into the uh, depth of tree and their uh, bark. So, this is a cross section of tree bark and you see that uh, this bark, yes, this is what the outer woody shell is actually called the bark. Okay, what a coincidence that I am talking about bark and my dog is barking at the same time. <laughs> okay, so uh, this woody shell is the, the woody coating is the bark. This is what we call bark. These rings, these are annular rings. So just see, this is the beauty of nature that, um, you know, as and when one year just passes by one ring is added to the tree just imagine how beautiful nature is that you can determine the age of the tree according to the annular ring so this is an annular ring these are the rings that are annular rings and pith is this thing it's at the center so this is pith basically and this is soft uh, living creatures which are found in the middle of the bark fine and uh, no more detail is required for you. So here just see, barks are the number of growth rings. No, number of growth rings are the annular rings. So first is incorrect. Pith is tiny dark spot of spongy living cells in the center of the tree trunk. Yes. And annular rings is the outside layer. No. So answer is B. Two only is the answer. Fine. Next. Consider the following statements regarding root systems of plants. Stilt roots are spike-like projection of the roots of mangroves or swamp trees. Pneumatophores are the adventitious roots emerging from the butt of the tree above the ground level. And prop roots are the roots which are produced from the branch and remain suspended in the air. How many are incorrect? They are not asking for correct. They are asking for incorrect. So, let me again give you a visual representation. Let me just hide myself so that you can see better. Okay. So, uh, these three are the three kind of roots that they are, uh, we are talking about. The first one is called a stilt root. This is a stilt root and as you can see that technically, sorry, technically the land should be starting here. And this part should be below the land. But stilt root is a very different kind of root that emerges from above the land as if, uh, you know, like we just, like we put wood to burn it. Similarly, nature itself puts uh, the root like this and gives support as we call to the butt of the tree. Right? 
so this is still true this is a mangrove and this is what we call pneumatophores i don't know if you can see or not let's try a different color no no color is visible pneumatophores okay now you have studied uh, the adaptations of this particular species which is called mangrove and pneumatophores are a part of it so this is easy to remember i hope and this one the third one this is called the uh, this is basically the banyan tree that we talk about these are the prop roots prop roots so sometimes you know in various sources you have the same term for prop roots and stilt roots stilt roots are different prop roots are different prop roots are hanging from the branches fine because the um, the amount of weight of the tree is so much and the oxygen requirement is so much that roots are hanging from the branches that's prop root uh, okay so these are the three kind of roots that are different from the normal roots and that's why we have a question from them let me reappear now okay uh, now let's solve this question stilt roots are the spike like projection no actually nematophores are the spike like projections and you should be able to solve this because it's clearly written that they are from mangroves right so first is incorrect nematophores are adventitious roots emerging from the bud no these are stilt roots and third prop roots are the roots which are produced from branch absolutely correct so here incorrect is being asked so b is the correct answer because two statements are incorrect just uh, fix this image in your mind this is a stilt root this is pneumatophore this is a prop root okay all right next question the terms prickly poppy toddy palm black mimosa water hyacinth and lantana camara seen in news frequently are invasive alien floral species which are found throughout india medicinal plants uh, species used in ayush and its research by ministry of ayush invasive faunal species of india especially found in the aquatic ecosystem of south india or none of the above now if you don't know prickly poppy toddy palm black mimosa you should be knowing water hyacinth you should be knowing uh, lantana camara you should also be knowing prosopis juliflora juliflora prosopis juliflora these all are invasive uh, plant species fine so answer is invasive alien floral species not faunal faunal is animal floral is plants right and all these species become important overall whichever species if you get the uh, sunne monthly magazine and overall yearly magazine as well there is a section of uh, invasive species that we have created there because every year upsc is telling us that they are pretty interested in knowing whether upsc candidates know about the invasive species or not so that's why uh, you can go for that particular detailed version theek okay? hai all right so answer here is a with reference to the classification of forest match the following pairs thin forest open forest dense forest close forest so um very easy to do these kind of questions consider yourself lucky if uh, you get these kind of questions because your common sense will solve them what do you think is the least form of forest that would be there it would be an open forest right so open forest will be having the least density fine they're not even a forest they're open area so open forest will be canopy density under 0.50 then will come the thin forest which will be a uh, canopy density from 0.5 to uh, 0.75 then there will be dense and close now dense and close mein competition hai do you think a dense forest would be closed if it is less dense or more dense than the dense forest itself it would be closed if it is very dense and human intervention is not allowed there right so closed forest would be the densest forest uh, and the canopy density is 1.0 and dense forest would be canopy density is between 0.75 to 1.0 right so answer would be uh, one would be matched with b two would be matched with a 
3 would be matched with D, 4 with C. So, A would be the answer. But important part is, who does this classification? The classification is done by India State of Forest Report. India State of Forest Report classifies forests in this way. And your task is to tell me in the comment section, who publishes the India State of Forest Report? Very, very simple question. You should be knowing this. If you don't know this, Google it and do comment it. And I must commend you at this point because you have completed all the questions that we had in store for you today. And I hope that you are very clear with the kind of plants that are there. Whatever is required till the UPSC paper prelims level. I have told you when it comes to the plant variety. Now we'll do science and tech. We'll dive again into this plant kingdom a little bit. But that will be from the science perspective. Okay. From environment perspective, from conservation perspective, we have covered a lot of species from the next class. In the next class rather, we will be doing the marine organisms. Marine organisms will be done. That is also a very important uh, variety. So I hope you enjoyed this class and I have just one. Uh, I urge you all that if you are benefiting from these classes, do comment and let me know because and some of you do that as well. You do drop the comments either with the questions that I have asked you or telling that what was okay about the class, what was not okay about the class because I do read all of your comments. Fine. Uh, so, I'll see you all in the next class. Uh, I applaud your patience and your dedication and your hard work and I hope this lecture was worthy of your time. I'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.